Does the Utah UFO resemble the Nimitz encounter and is a legitimate UFO? Or is it just an optical illusion or CGI? To answer that question, we're going to start with 3D camera tracking the footage. In case you're not familiar with 3D camera tracking, it is the process of analyzing the pixels of a footage and based on their motion, creating a replica of the actual camera that captured the footage. This is the best result we've got from the process. It looks promising. If you look at these points, they're matching the motion of corresponding pixels of the footage. In case you're wondering what these points are, they're called point clouds. An output usually generated when you do 3D camera tracking, so that later you can use them as a reference to check the accuracy of the 3D camera tracking. Now, how can we know what these point clouds represent? Some are easy to recognize. For instance, the utility pole here. But mostly, they're difficult to recognize. However, we just need three areas so we would be able to triangulate the scene on an actual Google Map image. We're going to choose the utility pole, the base of the mountain to the left, and the hill in the distance. Using those three areas as references, this is the closest we can get to match our 3D scene with a Google Map image. Now it's a good time to track the object. We are in luck because we have a starting point. If you look closely, you'll see the object goes behind that hill in the distance for a couple of frames, which means at least it is as far as that hill. Now where its trajectory ends, it should be close to the camera of course, before it exits the frame. If we get the size of the object right in the beginning, it should automatically tell us where it exits the frame by looking at its size. Here's the approximate path the object flew by. Here you can see a 3D recreation of the object. And assuming the videographers used 180 degree shutter angle rule, which is a standard in cinema, here with motion blur. At this point, you will see that it's possible to recreate this with CGI. But let's move on for now and see how big the object is. But hold on a minute, regarding the scale, what if it was really close to the camera and due to forced perspective we thought it was way in the distance? Let me explain it this way, with some simple geometries. Here, it looks like we've got a couple of cubes which are the exact same size. But are they? As you can see from this angle, they're not actually the same size, and it was actually an optical illusion. Could it be the same case with our object? Maybe it's a dust particle, and it's pretty close to the camera, and it's not flying really long distance. For two reasons, it is unlikely to be an optical illusion. First, is that the object goes behind the hill at some points, which means it's at least as far as that hill, which is around two miles. Second, if you check its parallax, it's matching the parallax of the hill. Parallax, simply said, is the amount of motion objects move depending on their distance from the observer. The closer they are, the faster they move, the further they are, the slower the motion. So in our case, it is unlikely to be an optical illusion. But if you insist, and you would explain that when it gets obscured, it's actually a noise and the parallax is just by accident, at this point, I'm going to call you the coincidence theorist. Now that we are leaning towards the object not being an optical illusion, let's check its size and its velocity. It is where it gets interesting. Not only the shape of the object reminds us of the Tic Tac UFO in the Nimitz encounter, but also the velocity, which is approximately 2 miles in a second. And in Nimitz encounter, the pilots said that the velocity was about 10 miles in 2 seconds. That's close enough. And regarding the scale, if you check the pilots' testimony, they said the UFO's approximate size to be around 10 to 14 meters. In our case, it has turned out to be around 49 feet, which equals to 15 meters. That is a major coincidence. 
At this point, if you still think it's not a UFO or a UAP, you end up with two scenarios. Either it's a bird or a bug, which is impossible because of its shape with no flapping wings, its trajectory with no dive and unimaginable velocity. Or you're gonna say it's a CGI. I'm not gonna argue with that because I already created it. But if I were to create this in the first place, I wouldn't go to trouble of using a Google map reference image and matching the size and velocity of the object with the Tic Tac UFO. Also, after releasing the footage, I wouldn't reveal my name or not even thinking about releasing the raw footage so people can analyze it. So if it is a UFO, you might ask why we don't see these more often in the sky. Now pay attention, in both cases they are seen in remote areas and they are insanely fast. So it's not that easy to catch one of these with naked eyes. So if it is a UFO or UAP, is it human or is it non-human or AT? Of course it's possible for it to be either, but if you look at its behavior in both cases, after the object realizes the presence of an observer, it flies by the object as if it's trying to scan it. If it were a secret military project, it would have already known what it's dealing with and being a secret project, it would have been disappeared. So it's more likely for it to be non-human. And here's our final answer. As you can see, I couldn't give you a definite answer, just the possibilities. But maybe in the near future, we will get an answer. Either by the government declassifying some secret military documents, or maybe an official contact.